Hi there, I'm James, and today we're diving into the science of spinning tops and optimizing their design. This is a highly requested video, and one I've wanted to make for a long time, but it's not the kind of thing the YouTube algorithm likes. So if you enjoy it, please put your thoughts in the comments, leave a like, and subscribe. Now, let's get into it. Spinning tops may appear to be simple toys, but there's a lot of interesting physics going on behind the scenes. Statically, they are unstable, but give them enough energy and they become dynamically stable. Now, this is quite counterintuitive. Most of the things we deal with every day are the other way around, statically stable, and when given too much energy, dynamically unstable. The difference here is that our spinning top gains rotational kinetic energy, and with this, it benefits from the effect of gyroscopic stability. Now, this is quite a generic term, which is commonly thrown around to explain spinning top mechanics, but there's even more going on. The gyroscopic effect merely explains why the spinning top processes. This means that instead of falling over, the top falls sideways. But this does not explain why they self-correct and stand upright. This is an entirely different effect and relies on a negative feedback loop, where friction on the side of the tip creates a correcting torque, which then counteracts the spinning top's lean. In fact, in a world without friction, spinning tops would never rise. Now we understand why tops spin the way they do, but how do we make them spin for longer? Well, let's briefly return to the energy idea. Above a critical amount of rotational kinetic energy, the top is stable. So, to keep it spinning for longer, we can do three things. Increase the energy the top starts with, decrease the energy which it topples at, and minimize the rate at which it loses its stored energy. When we start thinking like this, our problem becomes strikingly similar to the optimization of a battery. Because at the end of the day, that's exactly what a spinning top is, a mechanical battery. Individually, these three steps are quite easy to do. To maximize starting energy, we need to maximize the moment of inertia and starting angular velocity. This can be achieved by using a large mass in radius and performing multiple twirls on a thin stem. To minimize the toppling energy, we need to minimize the critical speed. This can be achieved by moving the tip as close to the center of mass as possible. Lastly, to minimize the rate at which the top loses energy, we need to minimize the braking torque due to tip friction and drag. This can be achieved by minimizing the mass, radius, and angular velocity, as well as sharpening the tip, balancing the top better, and lubricating the contact. Now, hold on a minute. I'm sure many of you can see the problem. And indeed, this is one of the most fundamental challenges in spinning top design. The more energy you design a top to start with, the faster it loses it. So what's the solution? Well, as it turns out, there is no analytical solution for this problem. Don't ask me how long it took to realize this. Thankfully, it can be optimized numerically, but this requires us to find quite a few constants that define the relationship between drag and tip friction, and this is no easy task. Aerodynamically, spinning tops act as viscous centrifugal pumps, which aren't commonly studied in academia. And the action at the tip is so microscopic, chaotic, and hidden, it too is hard to model. Despite these challenges, thanks to the years of data collected by myself and the spinning top community, I have some preliminary results. I used these in a basic model which helped me optimize the design of Mark 22. It's a good start, and it's always nice to see positive results, but there's a long way to go until I'm satisfied. So, do subscribe to follow my journey, and if you're interested in a spinning top like Mark 22, have a look in the description. Thanks for watching.